Hey guys, Emily here. Thank you so much for joining me for this full length Pilates mat class. It can be used as a recovery day. It will still be challenging, but hopefully you'll leave feeling relaxed, a nice full body workout, and maybe not too strenuous, but strenuous enough, right? So let's go ahead and begin with our feet flat on the mat, knees bent in front of us. They shouldn't be so, so close to your body that you're having to round back to sit up tall. So extend them a little bit further away from you so you can sit right up on your sits bones. We can go ahead and start with our heels, lined up with our knees directly underneath our sits bones. We're gonna inhale, exhale, float your hands up, tuck your tail, articulate down to the mat. Good, you might have to walk your feet in a little bit closer to you so you can find a nice flat saver from here. We want to make some adjustments for our body today so that we can find a nice flat sacrum. We can find a nice, comfortable, neutral spine. <sighs> Sinking all 12 back ribs into the mat. Nice, wide, flat shoulder blades. Go ahead and W your arms up to the ceiling with your elbows bent down towards your uh, hips, your palms up towards the ceiling. Go ahead and find a few nice deep breaths. Instead of flaring your ribs in the inhale, think of breathing wide and exhaling to pull it all back in. Let's take a few more deep breaths just like this, and then we'll go ahead and begin the workout. See if you can connect your breath to the movement. All right, go ahead and extend your arms long down by your side, squeezing under your underarms to lengthen out your neck, but still pulling those shoulder blades down to the mat, having a nice open collarbone and a nice soft sternum. Can you walk your feet in a little bit closer to you and see if you can lift your toes so that most of the weight's in the heels. So we can get a nice engagement down the backs of the hamstrings and into the glutes and connect with our inner thighs a little bit. You can walk your feet all the way together. We're gonna go ahead and begin with some tuck toes. So right now we have a lift from the tip top of our back hip to the bottom of our 12th rib. We're going to go ahead and imprint that as we slightly tuck our tailbone towards our nose or our chin in this case. We're not lifting anything off the mat. We're gonna come back to neutral and then we're gonna tilt our tailbone to the back, reaching the, the tailbone to the back of the head. You'll see I have a slight arch so I can slide my hand under in my low back right now. Come back to neutral. If that bothers your back, please feel free not to arch. Maintain a neutral spine. From there, I'm going to imprint. I have no more lift in my low back. Come back to neutral. And tilt my tail to the back and come back to neutral. Good. Relax your arms down by your side. You can relax your feet onto the mat. Keep most of the weight in the heel so you're not pressing through your uh, quads to reach your, your uh, belly down as you tuck your tail. Because otherwise the habit is to press into the toes to press the back down into the mat. We want to use our abdominals here. Come back to neutral, tilt the tailbone, neutral. Now tuck, neutral, tilt, neutral. Try to find a nice breath pattern as you tuck, neutral, and then tilt, and then neutral. Let's do two more. Tuck, neutral, tilt, neutral, tuck. Neutral, tilt, neutral. Good job. March your right leg up to tabletop, left leg up to tabletop. Extend them to the ceiling. Now, don't pull them towards your nose. Bring them straight up. So it's as if you have a post. Your leg is a post going straight up into the air. So you're perpendicular with the mat. We're going to float our fingers up, not over our shoulders, but over our sternum and 12th ribs, we can engage under our arms where you really find some pressure underneath the arms. Imagine you're pressing into something imaginary, mostly with a pinky blade edge. We're gonna inhale without moving our legs or tucking our tail. We're gonna exhale and curl up, reaching for the end of the mat and drawing the tips of our, our ribs towards the top tips of our hips. And uncurl. On the inhale, exhale to curl up. And inhale to uncurl. And exhale to lift. And inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. And inhale to lower. Now, from there, we're going to 
going to go ahead and bend our knees to tabletop. We're going to do five more. Ooh, did you see my shins were a little high? I went ahead and I lowered them. My knees are stacked directly over my hips. When I lowered my shins, I felt more engagement in my abdominals and I had to fight harder to keep a neutral spine. So fingertips back up, we're gonna inhale, exhale, curl up. Reach long for the mat. Do not tuck, make sure you can still feel that nice connection in the sacrum. And lower and exhale the lift. And lower. Here's three. And four. One more. Now, I'm going to extend my legs halfway out. I'm going to rotate the femur in the hip socket so I've turned out to a diamond position. So I look down, my legs aren't in a frog. They're not extended out in Pilates feet. They're right in the middle. I can still find a nice, flat, heavy sacrum. I'm going to stay here as I do five more curls. I'm squeezing my heels together strongly. I'm squeezing my glutes. And I have an engagement in my inner thighs from the heel squeeze. It's going to help with that. Inhale. Exhale the curl up. My legs are at a working level. And exhale the lift. Make sure you're not crunching your chin to your chest. And reach along. Really squeeze those heels. Really engage in the glutes. And now we're going to stay up. We're going to do the hundreds from here in a dime, but we're going to be pumping vigorously. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Long continuous inhale. Long continuous exhale. Again, we're not crunching our chin to our chest. We're squeezing our glutes. We have our legs extended in a diamond shape. Halfway there. Squeeze under the arms to reach your fingertips even longer. Don't wing them up towards the ceiling. Reach them for the end of the mat. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. I lost count. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Stop there. Draw your knees to your chest. Give them a hug. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. From there, we're going to do some variations on the uh, series of five exercises. The first one's kind of going to look like a hybrid between a single leg stretch and the scissors. And then the second one's going to look like a hybrid of the double leg stretch and, or, and the double leg lower lift. So we're going to combo some exercises, hopefully make it a little bit more enjoyable. Rest your feet flat on the mat real fast. And interlace your fingers and place them at the base of your skull and the top of your neck and the, well, where the base of your skull meets your neck, right? Thumbs are long down your neck. Now, lift your elbows up so you can see them in your periphery. Draw your ribs together and find a nice neutral spine. Leaving your head heavy in your hands, so your hands are, and arms are going to hold your head gently, but your abs are going to be holding your arms and head. You'll feel it strongly, so if you're holding yourself up like this, that's great. Now put your hands behind your head, let your head hold your hands, and then curl up even deeper, allowing your abs to do the work. There's a definite difference here. We're going to let our abs do more work. We're going to march one leg up to tabletop, other leg up. Now extend your right leg to single leg stretch. Lift it up to the ceiling, so your thigh to thigh, knee to knee, no higher. Lower it back down to the single leg stretch and pull that leg in. Curl up even deeper, now left leg reach. Lift up to the ceiling. Lower to single leg stretch and pull it back into tabletop. Right leg extends and kicks and lowers and pulls. Left leg extends and kicks and lowers and pulls. Again, make sure that you're not lifting your leg past thigh to thigh because it could throw off your neutral spine. Lift up even deeper. Here's four. Draw your belly button to your spine. Draw the tips of your ribs towards the tips of your hips and curl up even deeper. Make your head heavy in your hands. Here's six. Here's seven. We're going to eight. Make sure you're coming back to tabletop every time. Give your knees a hug. 
press your head, neck, and shoulders. Gently rock from side to side. We're going to hold our head and our hands again for the double leg stretch, double leg lower lift combo. So go ahead and rest your knees. Separate them a little bit wider. Go ahead and gently wrap your knees from side to side and windshield wiper your legs. Try to maintain your neutral spine while you're doing this. The opposite hip, so legs, my knees are going to the right. My left hip will lift just a little bit off the mat, but you shouldn't drop your knees all the way down to the side. It should just be a little lift. Like we don't want to lift up like this, right? I want to see just a tiny little lift, a tiny little release. We're not trying to, you know, crank our spine out of place here. Walk your feet back together. Place your um, interlaced fingers behind your head. Lift your elbows up. Bring your knees to tabletop. Inhale, exhale to curl up. All right, double leg stretch, double leg lower lift combo. Extend your legs to working level. Float them up to the ceiling. Lower them back down to working level and draw your knees back to tabletop. Now extend and lift and lower and pull. While we're doing this, make sure you're not arching into your back. If you're arching into your back, it's because your body can't support the load of your legs. First, try to imprint your spine as you're doing this work. The next thing that you're gonna do is not lower your legs so far in working level. You're gonna lift them up a little bit higher. And that should reduce your back pain. Curl a little deeper. Two more. One more. Hug your knees into your chest. Press your head, neck, and shoulder. Gently rock from side to side. Okay, guys, we've done four out of the five series five exercises. We have one more, but we're going to combo it with the scissors. So we're going to do elbow to knee combo with scissors. So one option that you have is to do eight on each side with one foot on the floor. Or you can do both feet to tabletop. So I'm going to do it with both feet and tabletop. But if you do it with one foot on the ground, you're just going to extend and lift and lower and pull on both legs eight times with the uh, rotation. If you can't do rotation, then just do the leg pulls. But all right, guys. I'm going to start with my head and my hands. I'm going to hold my, uh, I'm going to lift my fingers behind my head again. Bring my elbows up to my periphery. Bring my legs up to tabletop. Inhale, exhale to curl up. I'm going to extend my left leg as I rotate towards my right knee, dropping my right elbow. I'm going to lift my left leg up to, to the ceiling. I'm going to lower it to working level. I'm going to pull it back in as I rotate back to center. I'm going to extend my right leg as I rotate to the left. Lift my right leg, lower my right leg, pull it in as I come back to center. And now left and lift and lower and pull center. And now right and lift and lower and pull as I come to center. Other direction, kick. Try not to let your lower body shift at all. So really slow down the movement. Curl up a little deeper, guys. Halfway there. Here's five. Don't let, them, don't let your leg move you. You're moving your leg. Here's six. Control the movement. Here's seven. Now, think of dropping that, that elbow to the mat as opposed to lifting the higher, drop the lower elbow. So as I rotate towards my right knee, my right elbow will drop towards the mat. I won't think of lifting my left elbow. As I rotate to the left, I'll drop my left elbow. I won't think of lifting my right elbow. Hug your knees, curl down. And that way, it'll keep the rotation in the upper part of the spine from the belly button up as opposed to letting your lower body shift around with the load of the legs moving that as well. It can be a little much on the body, right? So, I'm going to extend my feet away from me, fingertips reaching up out of the sternum. Inhale, exhale, articulate up. We're going to be doing rolling like a ball, and then we're going to be moving into some single leg circles and doing some ballet stretches. So I'm going to scooch towards my heels. I'm going to pull my feet in tight. I am rounded here. I'm pulled in tight enough for I to round over my legs. I'm going to hold on somewhere above my ankle, below my patella or knee. From there, I'm going to tuck my tail. I'm going to pull into a tight little ball. My knees should not be wider than my shoulders, 
because it'll throw off my balance. The more narrow I can keep everything, the more more aligned uh, the more aligned my my um, rotation on both both sides of my spine should be on my back straps. So I like to keep my legs a little bit turned out. If you cannot do rolling like a ball, you can hold this position, contracting, squeezing under the arms, drawing the belly button to the spine, rounding, overlooking in the space between your heels and your sits bones, dropping your belly to your spine, drawing your ribs to your hips. Otherwise, for everyone else, we're going to maintain that position as well as we roll back to the tips of our shoulder blades and exhale to roll up. So we're going to inhale back and exhale forward. If you find yourself flat tiring on your low back as you're rolling up, it's because you're swinging your legs down to try to move yourself up, as opposed to using your exhale. Try to use a really embarrassing exhale and squeeze under the arms. And your movement should be more rounded along your spine. Let's do two more. One more. Good, hold it. Release with care and control. I'm gonna press back a little bit. I send my legs in front of me just like the beginning of class. Tug my tail, roll back to the mat. I'm going to keep one foot on the ground. Remember at the beginning of class how when we were working, um, I said, put the weight in your heel, put the weight in your heel. Here again, we're gonna put more weight in our heel to engage on the back of the leg. I'm going to draw my right foot straight up to the ceiling in a scissor kick. I'm going to find a neutral spine. After I've really engaged on the back of my leg, I can rest my foot down so I don't wear it out. From there, I'm going to flex my foot to lower it, so I'm thigh to thigh again, like we talked about earlier, point it and float it up, and flex to lower, and point it and float it up. Guys, lengthen out the leg so that you're really finding the length here. You're really working out those muscles, and you're challenging your core to maintain neutral spine. One more. Now, staying up at the top, we're going to come across the body and away from the body. Don't allow your hips to float up as you come across. Don't allow your left hip to come up as you float away. I'm using my right leg right now. If you're using your left leg, it would be your right hip that's floating up, right? Here's five. The magic number on leg circles is six. Come back to center. We're going to go across the body, back down so we're thigh to thigh, away from the body, and float it back up. Guys, use the TikTok to know how far you can come across your body without lifting your hip. We went thigh to thigh on the lower left. When you go away, remember how far you just went away from your body without lifting the hip, and come back up. So we've already hit all the major points on the single leg circle before we've even done it, right? The lower lift, the side to side, stop at the top and reverse. We're going to go to the side and down across the body and up, away and down and up. So you already know everywhere that you can go without losing your neutral spine. Now stay there, extend your left leg, Hold on behind your thigh here, not your knee. The thigh is, I like the thigh because I don't want to round up here. I really want to keep a nice neutral spine as we bend the elbows to pull the leg towards our underarm, not our nose. Now we're going to come across the IT band stretch. I'm going to place my hand on my calf or your thigh, not your knee. Remember how we lifted our hips slightly for can can? We're going to do the same thing here. So a slight little lift. You can extend your right arm and look at that palm as your left arm holds onto that right leg. Really extend the leg nice and long. Come through center. Now hold on behind the calf or behind the thigh. Pull the leg to the side and bend the elbow to pull it up. But don't let that opposite hip float off the mat. You can extend that other arm out to your T. I like to flip my palm up. I come back to center. 
Bend that knee again. We're going to lower the right leg to meet the left leg. From there, I'm going to scissor kick my left leg straight up to the ceiling. I'm going to find a nice weight in my heel on that right leg to engage that right side of the body. On the back side, I'm going to lower my foot down, keep that engaged, but whenever I find it, I'm going to flex to lower. So I'm thigh to thigh, point and float it up. Flex to lower and point to lift. Maintain a nice neutral spine the entire time you're doing this. Don't allow your hip to shift as you float your leg up. It most likely indicates that you are using a bit of momentum to lift your leg. Try to cut that out completely. We don't want to use momentum. We want to use our abs. Now, float the leg across the body and away. Again, guys, don't allow your hips to lift as you go, as you go across. My left hip would lift because I'm using my left leg. As I go away, my right hip would lift if I use my left leg. Okay, keep it going. Here's four. And five. Make sure you're still squeezing that right glute. Here's six. Now, come back to center. We're going to go across the body, down through thigh to thigh, away from the body, and back up. There's always one leg that's harder than the other leg. For me, it's my left leg. My right hip wants to float really badly when I go away from my body. So I cannot go as far away as I would like on this side. So I really have to find the engagement in my obliques on that side. Now stay up at the top. We're going to reverse. We're going to go away and down thigh to thigh, across the body and up. Away, thigh to thigh, across the body and up. Here's three. And four. And here's five. And here is six. From there, I'm going to extend my right leg, hold on behind my left hamstring as I bend my elbows to pull that leg in towards my underarm. <sighs> Try to keep a nice open collarbone. Sink all 12 ribs into the mat, and nice flat shoulder blades. From there, I'm going to take my opposite hand on my calf or my thigh, reach my left arm out to a T, look over at it for a nice circle stretch, flip that left hip up, and pull my left leg across my body to the right side. Extend that leg nice and long. One more breath. Good, come back through center. Hold on at the calf or behind the thigh. Pull the leg away from the midline and bend the elbow, pull it up. Good. Stretch nice and long out of that grounding leg, or for me, my right leg. So I'm getting a nice hip flexor stretch here. A nice little release. I'm going to come back to center. I'm going to bend my feet both flat on the mat, reach my fingertips up towards the ceiling, come in on my sternum, and roll up. From there, I'm going to extend my feet in front of me, flex in, and separate my feet hip width or a little bit wider, probably no wider than the mat, guys. So I'm going to sit up nice and tall, hinge forward ever so gently, Draw my belly to tight, my spine, draw my ribs together. I'm going to reach my fingertips up out of my sternum 12 root, just like I would when I was lying on my back. We're going into spine stretch, open leg rocker, and then saw. I'm going to inhale, begin to articulate down head first. Then I'm going to exhale, reaching my arms forward, keeping them parallel with the ground. Trying to get my ears between my biceps. And then I'm going to begin to pull back on the inhale and exhale to finish my articulation head last. Inhale, head begins to articulate down first. Exhale, reach over the legs, but reach over the barrel so you're not rounding or collapsing on your legs. Inhale back and exhale the rest of the way up. Inhale and exhale, reach. Really engage in your legs. If you have tight hamstrings, bend your knees and press into your heels so you can sit up tall. I 
Again, find a nice embarrassing exhale here. Squeeze under the arms so you don't allow your shoulders to come up to your ears. Here's five, inhale. We're only going to six. Six is our magic spine stretch and saw number. So we'll do three on each side for saw. I'm rolling like a ball. Our magic rolling number is eight. An inhale. Now release your arms. Scoot your booty in towards your heels. We're going to find the same position with our toes together touching that we just did for rolling like a ball. Instead of holding onto the outsides of our legs, we're going to hold onto the insides of our legs below the ankle or above the knee. When we do this, if we have the flexibility to hold on here, we're going to pull down on our legs so we can engage under the arms and pull our shoulders away from our ears. It will also help us to maintain a rounded spine as we do the rolling exercise. If you are unable to achieve that body position, you can bring your legs to tabletop and hold on behind your knees, still squeezing under the arms. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. So we will still tuck back, draw the belly to the spine, draw the ribs to the hips here. You can do the um, modified beginning exercise here as well. If you have um, osteoporosis, osteopenia, neck problems, or back problems, please just do the uh, warm up exercise for rolling like a ball without actually rolling, right? So if we're holding on here, we're going to tuck our tail, roll back. We're going to hover our toes off the mat and hold it here. If we're holding on to the front of our legs, we're going to hold on here. Now, if we're holding on behind our legs, we're just going to extend one leg like that. If we're holding on the front, we're going to extend that leg, one leg like this, trying to keep it in line with our shoulders, no wire, right? Just like rolling like a ball, other leg. And right, pull down and pull down on your left leg as you extend it. And no right leg and pull and left leg and pull. If you feel good here, we're going to extend both legs and pull and two. Sorry, we have one more. We're going to hold it. And if you can roll, please do so. If you have any of the Previously mentioned issues, continue with that exercise. We're going to inhale back and exhale up. And inhale back, pull down on the legs. It's usually easier to find a rounded movement here without flat backing. Really draw the belly to the spine. Really draw the ribs to the hips. Here's six. Two more. Pull down so you're really keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Oh, the leg rocker is my favorite. <laughs> All right, guys, challenge. You can bring your feet back down, but as a challenge, if you want to release your legs and float them down to soft position and sit up tall, please feel free to do so. We're going to find the same position that we just did for um, spine stretch. Odds are, if you reach down and hold on to your legs, they're going to be about in the same position for saw and spine stretch as they were for open leg rock, right? A little wider than your hips, probably in line with your shoulders. If you check it out, we're going to flex our feet, hinge forward ever so gently. Again, if you have tight hamstrings, press into the heels. We're going to come to a T, bring it into our periphery ever so gently so we can close our ribs, rotate towards the right, Articulate down over the barrel to saw off our toe. We're still reaching up and over barrel on this one, just from rotation. Up through center and opposite direction. Dive down over the barrel and saw off the toe. And up and then come through center. And then rotate and dive and lift and center. Don't allow your heels to shift on the mat. Just like in elbow to knee. The rotation is coming from the belly button above. Now shake your legs together. Lift your arms up tall. Hinge forward on a flat back. And then round over your legs for a nice stretch. From here, we're going to go into bridging. And then we're going to be doing some back extension work. 
So guys, we're gonna scooch our booty forward and articulate down with control. Walk your heels in towards your glutes. We want a little bit more weight in our heels, but we wanna maintain the nice neutral spine. Our uh, heels should be no wider than our sits bones, so we don't have to necessarily squeeze our legs together all the way. It will inhibit the lift that we have on our hips, but we do not want our, our heels any wider than our sits bones. So if you normally do your, do your bridges with your um, feet separated ever so gently, try squeezing them together once in a while. You're really gonna find a different glute workout. We're gonna platform our arms down by our side. The first thing we're going to do is uh, an articulation bridge, and then we're gonna do the hinge bridge where we lift everything up. So, just like at the beginning of class when we're tuck tilting, we're going to imprint our spine and then begin to peel our spine off. Really squeeze your hamstrings and imagine you're driving your knees over your toes. Now, articulate down one vertebra at a time. And find neutral spine. Now, imprint, imagine your spine is a strand of pearls and each vertebra is a pearl. Lift the pearls off the mat. Squeeze your glutes, draw your ribs together, nice soft stern, drop the, the lower abs, and then articulate down, dropping each vertebra down to the mat. And release to neutral. Imprint and articulate up. Driving your heels over, or driving your knees over your feet. Now, without moving, we're going to lift our right heel and lower. Now squeeze those right glutes and lift the left heel, still squeezing the left, and lower. And right and left, and right, and left. Now, squeeze your knees in both, and lower, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and lower, and articulate down. Guys, it's time for the hinge bridge. So everything will lift up at the same time, and lower at the same time. So no articulation. So imagine you have two balloons on each side of your hip, and you're gonna float it up, and lower it down, and lift it, and lower it. One more, we're gonna add on, now lift. Now, without shifting anything in your hips, hover your right foot one inch off the mat, and lower, and left foot, and lower. Really press into the heel to lift the opposite leg, and left, and lower. Squeeze your glutes, take a look. Make sure they're not shifting, and right, Good, and left, up higher, two more on each side, right, and left, and right, and left, and hinge bridge down. Now hug your knees into your chest, <sighs> and gently rock from side to side. Now release your feet, roll over gently, we're going to go into swan, uh, Squat prep or modified squat deck and um, swimming. So the first thing that we're going to do is place our forehead on the mat, extend our legs long behind us. We're going to squeeze in through the glutes to make our legs a little lighter and to open up at the front of the hip flexor so we're not tenting our, our booty up like this, right? Squeeze in on your inner thighs. Draw your belly up towards your spine. Draw your ribs together. Squeeze your biceps in towards your ribs. Your elbows will be pointing towards your hips. And your hands will be underneath your shoulders. Don't shove yourself into place here, right? Find a nice neutral spine. Place your hands down. Squeeze your biceps to your ribs. As you inhale, we're going to imagine our internal coming out of our shell. We're going to press up, up, up. Ribs still wrap. Belly button still towards spine. And then we're going to exhale to lower down one vertebra at a time. Again, imagine the strand of pearls, but it's, you're coming off your front instead of your back, right? You're still lifting up vertebra, vertebra, vertebra. As you inhale, pull your head through a turtleneck. Squeeze under the arms to keep a nice long neck. Squeeze the glutes strongly. Draw the belly towards the spine. Now in this next one, Put a little bit more weight in your pinky blade edge of your palm as you press up so you can really find that nice squeeze under the arms. Really squeeze the legs, draw the belly up and in, draw the ribs together. 
You shouldn't feel your ribs kickstand all the way down. They should be drawn in enough to where they're not going to do that, right? We don't want to flare our ribs on the way up. Rest your head on the mat. Float your left leg up or float your right leg up by squeezing your glutes, not by crunching your low back. So can you lift your left leg and lower and right leg and lower? We'll be very high. Left leg, right leg, left leg stay there, right leg stay there. Now, be, now turn it out and beat the heels for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Belly with the spine. Again for 10. Draw your ribs together. Squeeze under the arms. Three, two, one. Leave your legs there. Extend your arms long. Now, can you do a slight little chest lift? Float your arms up at the same time, squeezing down on the underarms. Now lower everything down. Now just lift your upper body. Now can you squeeze your glutes to float your legs up? If you feel in your low back, you've come up too high or you're not drawing your belly button to your spine enough. Now we're going to do legs and now we're going to lift the upper body and lower. And now one more time. Let's do the opposite way. Arms and head. Now legs. Now begin swimming. Inhale two, three, four, five, and exhale. Two, three, four, five. Squeeze everything to the midline. If you find yourself flopping around, it's because you're making your movements too big and not drawing them in close enough. Go ahead and reset. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Stop. Lower. Bring your hands under your shoulders. Press back into a child's pose. Try to sit on your heels. Just stretch out in the low back for counter stretch. Good job, guys. From there, we're going to articulate up, up, up to sitting up tall. Swing your legs in front of you. Sit up nice and tall. We're going to flex our feet gently and separate our feet so they're Underneath our sits bones. Again, if you have trouble sitting up tall because of hamstrings, go ahead and bend your knees. We're going to reach our arms out of our sternum. We're going to do the first part of spine stretch. We're going to articulate down, reaching over our legs with our biceps by our ears. Now, we're not going to pull back. Instead, we're going to flat back hinge up, reaching from where the wall and the ceiling meet, reaching our biceps by our ears. We're going to sit up the rest of the way in flat back, and bring our arms back down in front of our sternum, or 12th rib. And inhale over our legs. And exhale to flat back hinge up, sitting up all the way. And reach in front of our sternum, and inhale to reach over the legs. And flat back hinge, and lift up. This should feel like the second part of neck pull, because it really is. <laughs> That's all we're doing. It's the second part of neck hold. A nice hamstring stretch part. So inhale, reach over the legs. Rounding over that barrel still. Now flat back, hinge up. And lift up all the way. Make sure your ribs are still wrapped. And inhale to reach. And exhale, flat. And lift up. Arms in front of you. And inhale, reach. And lift. Lower your arms and inhale to reach. And exhale, flat back. And lift up. Let's do one more. It's a nice breathing exercise. A nice hamstring stretch. And lift up. Now lower your arms to your side. Bring your feet together. If you want, you can point them. I know I certainly will be for this exercise. Again, if you can't find um, this, is, this position, this up tall, bend your knees. We're going to bring our arms to a T and flip our fingers to our shoulders. So we're in a baby T position, right? I'm going to inhale, exhale. I'm going to rotate to the left, trying to look over my left shoulder, not allowing anything in my lower body to shift. Come back through center on the inhale and exhale to the right. And back through center. This is a spine stretch movement. 
If you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, please do not do this exercise. Now extend your arms long, no T. Don't swing. The reason I like to start with the baby T as opposed to the big T is because people like to swing their bodies around and crank them into position. We are using our muscles to rotate here. One more to each side, guys. Don't allow your heels to shift on the mat. Good. From here, we're going to come to sitting on our side. I have um, my legs tucked to the side in a classical mermaid position. If you have knee problems, uh, this will probably not be your favorite exercise to do. If you have wrist problems, you can do this on a fist. If this does not work, please don't do this exercise. But if you have knee problems, you can place a uh, padded uh, surface or a rolled up towel under your knees to try to help you this. We're going to be basically doing a side bend, uh, side, side kick kneeling exercise. I'm sitting back, so I'm going to bring my hand with my fingers pointed away from me so they're lined up with my knee. From there, I'm going to extend my top leg I'm lining my toe up with my front knee as well. Since I'm on an elevated mat, I'm going to scoot back a little bit so I don't tumble off the front right. That'd be embarrassing. I have my other hand reaching down by my side. I'm going to move my hand in so that it's underneath my shoulder. It's going to feel like a tight fit, right? From there, I, my, my top toe slide. I'm going to inhale, exhale, and just lift and squeeze my glutes to press my hips forward. I may have to adjust my hand so they can line my body up in a straight line. My bottom glute is firing strongly. And then I'm going to sit back. And then I'm going to squeeze up. And sit back. And now I'm going to squeeze up and lift my top leg and my arm up to a T. And then as I lower, I'm going to lower my leg and my arm and my hip. On this next one, we're going to hold it. We're going to do some side kick kneeling work. And then I'm going to lift. Holding an arm in a T, I'm going to pulse up for 10, 9, 8. Draw abs in. Draw our ribs together. Bring your hand to your hip if it feels better. Now, bring your foot forward an inch and squeeze it back with the glute. Not behind you, the original position. Here's two, three, four. I'm working in parallel. I'm squeezing under my arm. I'm going to squeeze that bottom glute and 10 small circles in each direction. So we we'll just go the opposite direction after you've done 10. I've done 10 and I'll reverse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. From there, I'm going to lower my hip, arm, and leg all at the same time. I'm going to come onto my back from there. I'm going to sit with my knees bent. I'm going to bring my fingertips right behind my glutes. I'm going to squeeze under my arm, squeeze my elbow towards the back of the mat, and I'm going to come back into a forearm position. Don't sink here, guys. Try to tuck your tail and flatten your sacrum, but lift up and out of the position. So you don't want to round in, bringing your shoulders to your ears. You want to lift up. Float one leg up to tabletop, float the other leg up. Now, just like we did in the beginning with the um, windshield wiper in the legs, we're going to float our legs to the left, we're not shifting the weight in our forearms. The movement's coming from the belly button below now. And pull it back with the obliques to center. Now go to the right. And pull it back with the obliques to center. And the left. We're doing some can-cans. We're going to work out to it, right? Here's three. And now we're going to extend to the left. Extend our legs. Bend our legs and pull it back to the obliques and go to the right. Again, my, my left arm is not getting light as I go to the right. And I'm going to go to the left. My right arm is not getting light on the mat, my right, right forearm. I'm going to go to the left. And bend and center and to the right. And extend and bend and center. And to the left, right, extend, and bend, and center. 
Now, I'm going to place my feet on the mat. You can just roll over to the right side from here to do the hinge uh, side, side kicks from the right side. I'm going to turn to face the camera because I don't like to show anybody my booty that much. <laughs> and again, I'm going to bend in to the traditional mermaid position. I'm going to bring my right hand onto the mat. I'm going to line my hand up with my knee. I'm going to extend my left leg long, but I'm going to bring it forward so my left toes lined up with my right knee. My, um, my wrist is underneath my shoulder, and I've extended my left arm down my side. From there, I'm going to squeeze my glutes and lift everything up at the same time to a side bend. From there, I'm going to adjust my hands. I'm going to adjust my knees. I'm going to make sure I'm firing my glutes. I'm going to draw my belly in, wrap my ribs, and lower everything down at once. And now I'm going to lift. On this next one, I'm going to lift and float my leg and arm up to a T. And then I'm going to lower my leg and arm as my hip lowers. We're holding the next one for the side kick work. And now I'm going to lift. Now I'm going to pulse up for 10, 9, 8. Abs in, drawing our ribs together. Nice long neck. You can also place your head in your hand or on your hip if you don't like the T. Now, go forward an inch and squeeze it back through glutes to the original position, not behind you, because it'll cause you to uh, arch in your back. Here's four. I'm working in parallel again. Here's six. Squeeze that uh, right glute. Here's two. And here's one. And now, ten small circles in each direction. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and lower everything at the same time. Come to sitting with your knees bent, sit up nice and tall, reach your arms forward, inhale, exhale, tuck your tail, articulate back. Walk your heels into your glutes, give a tiny bridge up. Take your hands, we're going to make them into a diamond shape with our thumb touching and our pointer finger touching. We're going to place it on our sacrum. So, my pointer fingers are down by my tailbone, and my thumbs are basically between my, my back hip bones, right? The top of my back hip bones. I'm going to march one leg up the tabletop and the other leg up and extend my legs up to the ceiling. I'm going to adjust my hands too much so I can find a nice flat sacrum. We're going to be doing some work with our legs in the air. I like having my hands under my sacrum. I think it's more comfortable for this work. We're going to do some scissors. So I'm going to extend my right leg away. And I'm going to switch my legs at the same time in the air. And then I'm going to extend my right leg and switch to my left. These are reciprocal scissors. Three. Four. We're going to eight. Five. Six. Try not to flare in your back. Your hands under your sacrum should help that. Now, bring both legs up to the ceiling. We're going to do bicycle. Extend your right leg away, and as you bend your right leg, your left leg will extend. As you bend your left leg, your right leg will extend. Here's two. We're going to do four in this direction, and then four in reverse. Last one. Now, keep your left leg bent as your right leg extends. Now, slide your left toe along the mat away from you. When your left leg extends, bend your right leg and lift your left leg as your right toe extends. Here's two. Don't allow your back to arch. After this, we're going to do a helicopter, which is my favorite. Now, lift both feet to the ceiling. It's going to be a mixture of scissors and leg circles. So. We're going to extend our right leg, switch to our left leg, and now we're going to do a leg circle in each direction to switch the flip of our legs. So, scissor left leg, scissor right leg, half leg circle in each direction to switch your legs. Now, right and left and circle. And left and right and circle. Maintain a nice neutral spine the whole time. Let's do one more. 
Don't allow your body to swing around willy-nilly, right? I know the legs are really moving here. But you want to make sure, lift them up to the ceiling, bend them in, place them on the ground, lift up to release your hands. You want to make sure that you're not cranking your back out crazy, right? Fingertips up towards the ceiling, come it out of your sternum, legs bent on the mat. And you exhale to the left. My legs have a pretty wide bend. I'm sitting up nice and tall, so I'm just going to open them to the side of a butterfly. This is going to be where I'm working from here. A nice wide diamond. So I'm not all the way to the butterfly. I'm not all the way extended. We took our diamond from the beginning. We placed it on the mat. We lifted our upper body up instead of lying down. I'm going to hold on or gently have my fingertips placed on my calf. Anywhere below my patella or above my ankle, knee, ankle, right? From there, I'm going to tuck my tail, draw my belly to my spine, and look down in the diamond shape in between my legs. From there, I'm going to left, I'm going to lift my chest up from where the wall and the ceiling meet, and then I'm going to come back down. We're doing cat-cow from this position, but it's very gentle. Let's do one more. Let's find neutral spine. We're going to be doing spine stretch. So I'm going to rotate towards the right, and I'm not going to crank my body with my hands, but I'm going to place them down, and I'm going to lift my spine up higher. We lift up taller. So I'm pressing down as opposed to cranking. I come back through center. I'm trying to maintain that same lift in my spine. Rotate to the left. Press down into the mat, into the top of your shin, as you try to rotate even further to the left. Try to maintain that lift. Come to the right. Can you lift up higher? Belly button to your spine further. Drawing your ribs together even more. Maintain that same position and come to the left and lift. One more to each side. And now one more to the left. Now maintain that same lift. As you come back to center, bring your arms up to a T in your periphery. Bring your right arm down as you reach to the right side where the wall and the ceiling meet, leaving your left hip firmly grounded. Use your left obliques to pull your body up, up, up to sitting up tall. Float your arms back up to that T in your periphery. And reach over to where the wall and the ceiling meet on your left. Now float it back up. If you would like to add on, Bring your arms up, biceps by your ears, and reach to the right side. Your, your bed won't be as severe because you won't have any support on the lower side, or won't be as great. Your bed won't be as great. And squeeze your obliques to sit up tall. One more to each side. And final one to the left, and lift. Now, Bring your arms down, inhale, lift up, lift your back in a tiny back extension as you exhale to open your arms, and one more, tiny back extension to lift, and exhale to lower. Guys, that's class. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or need any modifications, please feel free to reach out, and I hope that you have a great day. Thank you.